Hello, my name is uh, Andrei Parnachev. I'm from the School of Mathematics. The title of my talk is Playing with Strings, Quantum Fields and Gravity. And uh, I, I will try to tell you today uh, what is it that uh, theoretical high energy physicists do these days and uh, why uh, we're doing this. And here's an example of a typical uh, theoretical high energy physicist who is looking at a highly entangled web of quantum strings, uh, trying to make sense out of this complicated picture. Here is the outline of my talk. I will start by reminding you that theoretical physics is actually extremely useful for the society because it forms a base for all modern technology. But in addition to this, theories are also inherently beautiful and imagination can take you pretty far. And also uh, the language uh, which theoretical physicists operate, the language of mathematics is universal. So it can be applied in a wide variety of contexts. You can solve various problems with the same equations. And then uh, last but not least, uh, reason one of the reasons why we are doing theoretical physics is because we like learning new things. Now, uh, let me remind you that uh, mathematics describes the world with uh, an amazing precision. Uh, if you think of uh, Newton laws of motion, for example, uh, they describe the motion of airplanes, trains. You know, if you throw a rock, you can uh, calculate exactly its trajectory. You can calculate the trajectory of planets. Describes everything. Now, um, slightly uh, more sophisticated equations uh, called Maxwell equations describe electromagnetism and they explain light and uh, form a basis for radio and TV. And then if you go to more recent uh, physics, like quantum mechanics, uh, quantum mechanics explains how computers work, how in the internet functions and how our cell phones operate. So now, as you see, uh, without theoretical physics, without quantum mechanics and uh, electrodynamics, there'd be no computers, no, no, no phones, and uh, no online teaching, and uh, I wouldn't be able to record this talk. So it's quite useful. But, of course, in addition to being useful, uh, formulas can be quite beautiful. And uh, this is one of the reasons why people do theoretical physics. So if you wish, there is a strong aesthetical uh, component to it. So in a way, uh, theorists are like artists. The difference is that uh, we're not uh, creating, let's say, new painting. Instead, we're sort of uncovering the beautiful painting that the nature gave to us. But uh, the way it works is we are playing with uh, mathematical formulas and uh, more often than not, uh, beautiful formulas are correct. Formulas actually tell us the way to go. Now, these formulas sometimes lead to strange or at least counterintuitive things. For example, a particle can be at two different places at once or a cat, called Schrodinger cat, can be uh, dead or and alive at the same time. So all these things really do happen. However, uh, quantum physics is correct in the sense that it describes all matter and uh, we can actually test this experimentally by colliding uh, atoms and smaller particles at uh, colliders at very, very high energies. So we can study the smallest constituents of matter this way, and then the theory that we have to describe them, called the standard model, is amazingly precise. So it's quite successful. Uh, so what the standard model tells us is that uh, there are three types of forces. Uh, 
electromagnetic, weak and strong, and particles are excitations of these forces, and the strength of these forces varies with energy. So as you increase the energy, all these three forces unite, they become one force. And at even high energies, they unite with gravity. So people call this uh, undiscovered unified theory, where all the forces unite with gravity, the theory of everything. Now we do know that uh, something like a theory of everything is needed in certain physical regimes, because the usual theory of gravity, Einstein's gravity, breaks down and quantum gravity description is needed at places like black hole singularities and more importantly at the Big Bang singularity uh, which started our universe. However, it's not at all easy to uh, cook up a theory which will have quantum physics and gravity at the same time because most of such theories are simply not internally consistent, not mathematically consistent. Uh, it turns out that uh, something called string theory does a very nice job unifying quantum physics and gravity, and for this to work, some amazing mathematical miracles have to happen. So the question is then whether we can get this theory of everything as a result of pure mathematical consistency. And people uh, try to work hard to achieve this, this dream of theoretical physics. Now, all these uh, string models typically have uh, 10 dimensions for the consistency reasons, but uh, of course we know that we live in four space and dimensions, so the way it works is six extra dimensions are very, very small. They're curved into a small space called Calabia. And, uh, vibra and, and we can't access this, this small space. And vibrations of tiny strings create all matter and gravity in the universe. However, recently it turned out that there can be, in principle, many consistent theories. And uh, what people also learned from these constructions is that gravity is emergent is an emergent phenomenon and it has an equivalent description in terms of quantum fields. So this equivalence between gravity and quantum physics is called holography and it can be used to understand quantum gravity and hopefully the theory of everything. So some of the things that uh, people use holography for is to study black holes. But black holes are these objects in space-time uh, which are uh, so heavy, so big, even the light can't ex ex escape them. And uh, one way to think about them is that they lead us to some other worlds. So a black hole uh, can also be viewed in certain situations as a wormhole. And uh, here's a picture of what happens if uh, a spaceship falls into a wormhole uh, in, you know, let's say this is our part of the universe, if we jump into a wormhole, we will uh, get out the completely different part of the universe. So in principle, things like this might allow us to travel uh, huge distances. And people actually do study objects like this, objects like this with holography. And uh, another thing people use holography for is understanding our universe. For example, we know that, at least we believe, that uh, the early universe had a period of uh, very rapid acceleration called inflation, and one can ask a question uh, whether uh, strong quantum dynamics during this time can be explained by holography. So it's quite, uh, it's quite uh, useful. Now, uh, l let me talk about something else. Uh, as, as I uh, mentioned, mathematics is completely universal. So you can uh, use the same equation to describe completely different things. For example, mathematics of quantum fields describes superconductors and also particles produced at accelerators, topological phases of matter, all of these things can be described with the same formulas. On the other hand, gravity describes stars, black holes, and the universe, but 
uh, as, as I just said, gravity and quantum fields are the same thing. So in principle, with the same mathematical technology, you can describe everything. And it's kind of fun. If you can, you know, today you can study superconductors, tomorrow you can study the, the beginning of the universe. And uh, imagination can uh, take you quite far. So for example, gravitational waves were predicted more than 100 years ago by Einstein mathematically and only observed very recently. Of course, here, here is uh, how uh, the real uh, virtual reality headset looks like. Uh, and uh, in the work that we do, uh, blackboards or whiteboards are still indispensable. Now, let me now talk about one other strong reason why we do theoretical physics. And uh, that's the fact that we constantly learn new things. And uh, that's great. So if uh, you like learning new things, you'll really enjoy it. For example, uh, as you uh, study physics, theoretical physics, you'll learn what light is, what color is, why the sky is blue, uh, what is electric current, and how transistors and CPUs work. And then the questions become harder. Can you travel faster than light? How do lasers work? What is a chain reaction? What makes the universe expand? And so on. Well, this uh, we don't really know yet, but uh, eventually we'd like to learn that as well. And uh, since mathematical methods are so effective in physics, a natural question one can ask is whether one can apply these techniques somewhere else. And people are trying to apply these techniques uh, to describe things like stock market, human brain, and so on. Thank you very much, and uh, good luck with your future career.